The following is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcasting, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. WIFO 105.5 FM in Jessup. It is now time for the world famous Butch and Bob show. And Bob, we got a very special guest on our phone this morning. Definitely do. As promised, Brian Kemp, Governor elect, with us here this morning on the world famous Butch and Bob show. I know he's a busy person. We've got a few minutes, but Brian, first of all, we just want to congratulate you and ask you how it feels to be the next governor of the state of Georgia. Hey, good morning, guys. Thanks so much for having me on. Feels great. Uh, let the people in Wayne County and that surrounding part of South Georgia, I appreciate their support, number one. But number two, we are hard at work transitioning, get ready to hit the ground day one on January the 14th. I know you had to be happy with the results of the Tuesday runoff. I know you were supporting Brad Raffensperger as, as Secretary of State, so I'm sure you're happy about that. those results as well. Oh, no doubt. That was very important for keeping the security of our elections, making sure accessible and fair and you know brad like i follow state law that's something that the left just continues to leave out of all these discussions and you know mistruths that they're telling everyone is you know i've been simply following state law as secretary of states while we have a million more people on the voter rolls than when i took office we had record turnout in the midterm election we had record turnout in the presidential before that, minority participation has been up in Georgia, and you don't hear those things. Uh, but those are the facts, and, you know, we've moved on from that. I'm transitioning to be governor, and as you guys know, one of my priorities is strengthening rural Georgia, and we're going to be working on that day one. And I want to go back to the campaign. The bus tour was very successful. I hadn't had a chance to talk to you since you came to Jessup, but I understand that crowd that showed up at the farmer's market made an impression. Brian, you with us? Yeah, you guys there? Yeah. yeah. I said, uh, well, yeah, it, it was an unbelievable crowd down there in Wayne County and really everywhere we went on our bus tour. Putting Jordan's first bus tour was very successful all over the state. I appreciate people down there turning out. And I think, you know, that's one reason I won the race is I took my message straight to Georgia voters and my opponent was taking them to, you know, California and New York to raise $42 million to try to buy the race. And, you know, Georgian spoke up. I got more votes than any other person that's ever run for governor in Georgia, and we're very proud of that, and I'm proud of the strong support we had down in Wayne County and that whole area, quite honestly. That was a big reason that I won. And as you mentioned, you're making your transition. Again, just to clarify your vision for the state of Georgia and you know, what you'd like to see done when you become governor of the state of Georgia. Well, one of the things guys that I told people on the bus tour was when I get in office, I'm going to do exactly what I said I was going to do. Same thing I said in the primary and the runoff and in the general election. And that's what we're transitioning into right now. We're planning on putting a committee together day one to start looking for streamlining ways we can streamline government, cutting government red tape and regulations like the president's done at the national level to help make Georgia number one in the country for small business. We're going to reform state government budget conservatively so we can work again to cut state income tax uh, as slated in, in uh, 2019, 2020 session. And then we're going to focus on strengthening rural Georgia. And then, as I, as I have said many, many times, we're going after drug cartels and street gangs. And if you just joined us, Brian Kemp, Governor Lick, with us on the World Famous Switch and Bob Show. You know, it took forever to get a concession from your opponent. Did you think you'd ever, you know... Talk a little bit about that period, how that was for you and all that. Yeah, I, I don't really know if it was much of a concession, but I wasn't too worried about that. The results have been certified, and we're focused on putting Georgians first now and making sure that we keep our state moving in the right direction and that we're giving folks in rural Georgia and south Georgia the same opportunity as anyone else, like access to high-speed Internet, good quality economic opportunities, you know, I'm going to be focusing on working on raising the rural hospital tax credit to help save our rural hospitals and looking at innovation uh, through market-based solutions to lower health care costs. I mean, those are the things that Georgians care about, and, um, you know, that's what I'm going to be working on day one. We're actually working on those right now as we move through the transition. 
the people I've talked to in this area, they're happy that you won because, as you mentioned, you're an advocate for rural Georgia, and you took this part of the state by overwhelming numbers. Uh, we always talk about the two states, the below making and above making. How do you unify the state and get everybody on the same page? Well, I think just you know, by doing what I said, I was going to do. Uh, the, the issues that I'm talking about that we've been discussing literally this morning on you, you, know, you guys' show, I mean, the vast, vast majority of Georgians know that know and support issues like that, and you take away the rhetoric of the campaign and, quite honestly, the lies that were being told by liberal outside special interest money. You know, I've got a great opportunity. It's no different than I won when I won my first seat in the state Senate in a very tight race. You know, 51.5 percent of the, the vote, or I'm sorry, I think it was 50.5 percent of the vote. Uh, but I went to went to Atlanta and worked hard on putting Georgia first and representing my district and cutting regulations and cutting taxes and bringing our values to the state legislature. And I'm going to do the same thing as governor, and I think that will resonate with a lot of Georgians that didn't vote for me and Georgians that will be eligible to vote in 2022. And I'm looking forward to talking about that record. You know, three, three and a half years from now. Well, again, we appreciate you calling in this morning. They told us you're busy. You got some other things you need to do. But uh, again, we appreciate you coming to this part. Uh, I know you're going to be coming. You know, once you become governor, we'll look forward to having you come back to this area as well. And look forward to working with you for the next four years. Again, congratulations on winning the race. Uh, like I said, this part of the state, very excited because. Uh, you know, you, you visit this state many times or visit this part of the state. You've been in Wayne County many times. Uh, a lot of Wayne County is, I know the mayor is good friends with you. He's excited, so uh, he wanted to pass along his well wishes as well. And, again, just appreciate you being on this show. And, again, just want to let you know you have this show anytime you want. You've got the number, so we'd love to have you as a regular, you know, and have you constantly tell us what's going on in the state of Georgia and what's going on with your uh, campaign. Well, that sounds good, guys. We look forward to doing that. I hope everyone has a Merry Christmas and give the mayor my best. Okay, oh, Brian. Thanks again. Okay, thank you, Brian. Have a great day. Take care. All right, WIFO 105.5 FM in Jessup. Governor-elect Brian Kemp, our special guest here on the world-famous Butch and Bob Show. And um, like you said, Bob, hopefully he will be a regular guest here on the Butch and Bob Show, uh, kind of like uh, Johnny Isaacson's office. will give us a call about three times a year and say we want to be on, and we uh, hopefully the governor's um, office will do the same thing, or we'll just give a call in to him just in case. I just appreciate him you know, taking time. Like I said, I tried to line it up, and they told us he had a real busy schedule, but he would... Give us five, six minutes this morning. So, again, I appreciate him calling in. Like I said, he's been in this area many times before he ran for governor. You know, he was the Secretary of State. He's come to day for Wayne many times. A lot right. of people in this area know him extremely well. So, just, uh, and like I said, the numbers in this part of the state were overwhelmingly in support of Brian Kemp. So, as you said, he's an advocate for rural Georgia. So, it's going to be fun to see how it all plays out in the next four years and what all he does bring to this area. Right. Oh, well, one thing we did find out from the election, there seems to be a rural Georgia. You want to say rural Georgia, not only places like Jessup and uh, and uh, Baxley and, uh, um, you know, places like that, Alma, but also uh, places like uh, Brunswick and uh, communities of that size. But then you get into, you know, those kind of communities, but then you get into the urban areas, and especially Atlanta, around the Atlanta area. Uh, there's, there's the rural, what I call rural Georgia, and then there's the urban Georgia. And it's, as you can see in some of these elections, it's almost 50-50 when it comes to uh, support of whatever candidate. And, um, and that's a great question you presented to, to Governor-elect Brian Kemp, is how do you bring these factions together? Uh, I, I know well, I've talked about it for years. There's, it seems to be there's two states. There's above Macon and below Macon. Right. So it's always been that way. But it was good to see. I can't tell you how many the number of times that Brian Kemp came to this part of the state oh, below yeah. Macon. He was All in Savannah, I mean, in Wayne County, in Blackshear. I mean, he took the time to come and talk to the people in the world. That's why I think that part of this part of the state's excited to have him in the governor's office come January because he will be looking after rural Georgia. He won't just ignore us, right. which a lot of people in this part of the state believe that we've been yeah. ignored for quite some time. <laughs> so it's just good to have an advocate there. Somebody knows, he knows this area. He's been to Wayne County. He knows what we have to offer. So right. I think it's just, it's going to be a beneficial 
thing to have him in that office. So looking well, forward to it. you got half it. the population of the um, state living above I-20, which runs right there where Fulton County Stadium used to be. I mean, we're not talking about 16 that runs through Macon. We're talking about up higher at 20 uh, that runs through the south part of Atlanta there, that you've got over half the population of the state of Georgia that lives in only maybe one-third or one-quarter of the uh, land mass, maybe one-third of the land mass of the state of Georgia, uh, it, it does create two Georgias. Uh, gee, I don't know. He, he just seems to be kind of, you know, like one of us. They, yeah, you know, there's yeah. politicians, they seem to talk over you. He mm -hmm. kind of, you know, he just he looks just at you us. and yeah. talks to you. You know, it's somebody you, you may not always agree with him, but I think you can talk to him and have a discussion. So just happy that he's become our next governor yeah. looking forward to it. wish him nothing but the best like i said he's a busy man right now getting his transition team together but it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out the next four years yeah as secretary of state he was down here many times as you mentioned to day of wayne uh for day of wayne and other uh, other activities that went on then of course during the campaign from the primary all the way up through the uh, general election he was uh, down this way and he's got, he, and the thing about it is he's got a lot of good friends here in the wayne county oh, area i, I mean just not people support him but oh, good right. friends Right, exactly. Uh, he knows this area well. He's been in this area many times. You know, he likes this part of the state. So. Yeah. Well, as rural Georgians, uh, you know, you've got to be uh, happy that um, that he is, uh, says he's going to do things for uh, rural Georgia, uh, because the way everybody knows the 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 economic machine is up there in the Atlanta area. Uh, we just need to get uh, that spread out throughout the state a little more evenly, and uh, hopefully, he can come up with some plans along with the state legislature to, to be able to do that. You know, he's kind of like an underdog, too. You know, when he first threw his name in the hat, you know, he wasn't... No, it was Kegel all the yeah, way. Yeah, I mean, he wasn't given much of a chance to win this race. But he uh, defeated Casey Cagle and had the big race with Stacey Abrams and won that. So I said he's a hard-working individual and has a good strategy and you know, did a good job traveling the entire state of Georgia and was able to win the election. So, But like I said, he just seems like he's... Knows this area well. Like I said, he has a lot of friends in this area. I think he's not going to be any stranger to Wayne County, which is nice to know that yeah. the governor's going to at least visit the state every now and then, and, or visit Wayne County every now and then. I wanted to ask him how well he uh, he knows Bill and uh, Blake uh, to be able to work in this area with our state senator and our state representative. And of course, he probably doesn't know Meeks all that well yet, but uh, I know that you know, he's probably worked with uh, Bill and uh, and Blake some. I think he knows them pretty well, though, because like I said. They know Gary Black pretty well, and Steve Mixon, he, he has a good relationship with him as well. So Gary Black, in fact, coming a week from today, I believe, the 13th. Uh, yeah, the coming in uh, next the, week, the, 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 the Agriculture luncheon. Commissioner right, coming so. in to uh, speak to the Wayne County Chamber so, of Commerce yeah. luncheon there. People can still get tickets. Call 427-2028 and hear what the Secretary of Agriculture in the state of Georgia has to say, because agriculture is so, so important. Uh, to this part of the state. Oh, and he'll give us an update on that legislative session that they had, a special session to help with all that devastation from the hurricane. Right. So, I mean, that last interview I did with him over there in, in Black's year when he talked about how much billions of dollars was lost. Lots of damage in Southwest Georgia. Just sad, yeah. sad to hear. So, but I'm sure he'll update that when he comes to Wayne County for the quarterly membership lunch. Yeah. Well, I think you said the things are getting closer to um, to maybe find out some more facts about the uh, damage that was done to Howard Bow Warren Field. Yeah. I think they got several suspects that they're talking to, and I said they're working hard on that. But we should have something, if not by Friday, possibly by Monday. So. Well, coming into work this morning, I saw some folks, uh, or a person, probably like one vehicle, uh, had some uh, mud bogging fun from... You know where you go into the entrance there uh, to the uh, tennis court and cross country, you know, right across the street from the high school, to the left of that, which would be toward um, uh, Hurricanes, you know, you know uh, going down Joy Williamson Road that way. So if you get to the left of that road, uh, going down toward Highway 84, you can see uh, ruts up and down the ditch and around and turned and up and down. Pretty good ways down. They were mud bogging from there all through the ditch, you know. So there's, there's a lot of ruts back over there again. As there was before. So we're going to blame all the song. We didn't have the mud bogging this year. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't have the mud bogging this year. So. So. <laughs> uh, you know, this is on the side of the road in the ditch. So it's not that big of a deal. It's different when you break into a facility and, and mess up a, a football field or a baseball field or a soccer field we, you know, around the tennis courts. I mean, we've seen it all through the years, you know, uh, both uh, schools and recreation. 
folks want to get out there and then um and i guess in their minds have a good time i don't know but uh you know, destroying something that uh, has been, you know, years and years of um, hard work and to make it one of the best facilities in the state of Georgia is just, it's just heart-wrenching. You know, a lot of people are upset about it. Uh, people don't understand how much damage has been done. I mean, it's going to be a task to get that field. Yeah, you just don't fix it right. Baseball season, yeah. So it's just, it's just sad that it took place, but there's a lot of damage. It's going to be a very expensive project. But thanks to the Home Run Club for putting up the $1,000 reward, oh, yeah. I, think, I think that's helped. To have people call in with you know unfortunately i don't know what it is about people who do crazy things like this but apparently they can't keep it a secret they got to tell somebody so well my thoughts were if it's a young person age 21 and below they're gonna they've got to brag about it and somebody. they've got and they've got to tell someone and they're gonna somehow in some roundabout way put it on social media because they're you know they didn't do it to hide it, okay? I mean, they did a very public um, um, activity. And so it's just amazing to me these days, the people that will do something. And we see that not only with young folks, you know, 20 and below, but you see it 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s on up, that they'll do something they're not supposed to do, but they'll put it on social media. And next thing you know, here, here comes the law at their door. You know, you just want, what were they thinking, you know? Herm Edwards says it all the time, don't hit sand. Say that again now? Don't hit sand. Oh, don't, don't hit, hit sand. sand. That's, That's right. Don't hit sand. It. Don't hit sand. Well, you and me don't have to worry about that. We don't have social media, so we don't have to sit there and worry about that kind of stuff. And Lord, the more I read about social media and the companies behind that and the information they get from you and they sell and uh, they use against you and all, just all kinds of stuff, it's just... You know, I'm just glad I don't have social media, any, uh, really. I just don't have time. Yeah. Don't need it. Yeah, don't need My it. My sister's People want, me. Yeah. Tell me I need to get it. I said no. No, no. no. If you want to get a hold of me, call me or text me, okay? That's call me good. or text me, yeah? Yeah, I don't, have to be on, I don't have to be on social media and put my life out there for every cover, government. And, uh, I mean, yeah, well, you have no privacy when you do that. I was just reading an article about it this morning about it, the lack of privacy when you got all your stuff all over social media. But, yeah, you know, to each his own, Bob. To each his own. To each his own. They want to do that, go right ahead. 105.5 FM and Jess at Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO, world famous Butch and Bob show for this Thursday morning. Well, here we go. We call off the parade last week, the parade committee does, and boom, here comes Saturday this week carbon copy of last Saturday in terms of the weather forecast and, um, and I think you mentioned they may try to move it up a uh, little bit in the day. Yeah, the good news is it's still going to take place Saturday. The question is what time it'll start but the committee will be here tomorrow. Dina from the chamber will be here tomorrow morning with Lon Donnie Ray and they'll give the full report tomorrow but again they can't you know, there was rumor again that they're no they're not canceling the parade they're not postponing the parade it's definitely going to take place saturday the question is they may have to move there's a window there where they think they can get it in and they may move it up a couple hours yeah so it's, they're going to make that decision today so please Anybody who tells you the parade's being canceled, wrong. It's going to be, it may it's not be being postponed up. again. It's going to take place Saturday. The question is what time Saturday, and we'll have that answer yeah. for you tomorrow. Don't believe here the rumors on, the on social Facebook media. Bob show. Lots of input in the parade. Like I said, a lot of people put you know, a lot of time in the A lot of time. A lot flow, of time. So they just want to try to get it where it's not going to be. The weather's not going to be an issue. So they're going well, to it's 30% chance of rain during the day. Then it increases to 60 and then to 90. Right. And so the I earlier think that's they what can Jonathan have had. it, the better. That's what John, I think Jonathan said. He looked at it. He said, right at 7, it's not going to be pretty. So he's, you know, he said there's a window before that. So yeah. I'm sure that, I mean, they said, they, they get in touch with the, as they mentioned last time here, they talked to the National Weather Service down in Jacksonville. Well, they had a ride right. on money last Saturday. So, 7 o'clock, 12 right. I mean, so, early morning, midday, I'm, and around I'm 7 sure o'clock, they hit it right they'll, they'll get the time when it will be appropriate and be able to get a good crowd down there. So we'll have that information tomorrow. They're on the, they're on the Butch and Bob show tomorrow morning they're to let tomorrow. everybody know exactly what time the parade will be on Saturday. Yeah, it may move, be uh, moved up a couple hours. You might not be able to see the lights as well as it being dark, but, you know, you got to do what you got to do. And then, and then Sunday's a 90% chance of rain also. So we've got a, a wet Saturday night and, and Sunday. A lot of rain the last couple of weeks. Well, it's that time of year, Bob. You know, you got to 
replenish the moisture in the ground and build the streams and rivers up and that's what happens during hopefully during the winter. That's what you hope for. And then when it's got spring, you got enough moisture down there to plant them crops. You say so. I say so. <laughs> What about our basketball teams at Wayne County High School looking good this year? Off to good starts. So, I said they'll be back in action Friday, Saturday, Friday at long, Saturday against Pierce. Looking forward to wrestling day. First wrestling matches of the year today at the high school gymnasium. Oh, so, it is? The first uh, wrestling matches ever for Wayne County High School. Uh, and don't expect to see a ring and them jumping off the ropes and stuff like that. It's not quite like that, folks. Just think about the wrestling in the Olympics, and that's what kind it is. No one's wearing masks. No one's wearing masks. They're not jumping off the ropes. <laughs> it's good that the, the sports, you know, I, I like that they brought, you know, they yeah. brought volleyball a couple years ago. Wrestling's been added. So it's just good to see these different sports added to the athletic program, give kids a different venue, different sports. So, but. You know, 40 some kids involved, close point set. Wow. Has a background, knows what he's doing, coaching them up. So it should be fun to watch this afternoon. Looking forward to seeing that. Mm -hmm. Did you have a wrestling team there at Stoneman? We did. I told, did I, told that, I told that story all the time. But my football coach wanted me to, you know, I, I was a skinny. People know when I came to Wink, I weighed 130. Yeah, uh, that was about like me. Yeah, I, I put on about on Thanks to Sybil Wolf Jones Kitchen, Patty Bryan cooking. <laughs> uh, you know, I, put, I put on 100 pounds since I've been you know, 30 years. But my wrestling coach, I was like 120, you know, senior year. And he said, you need to wrestle. I said, coach. I'm not going out there as a senior and get pinned by some freshman <laughs> from some. I said I will be the. Uh, uh, that's what I'm saying. I'll never, I'll never hear the end of that. I said no, I'm not a wrestler. Yeah, yeah. I said I never, I never went to school. Can't, can't help you, coach. But he, he wanted. He said you'd be good. You're senior. One time you, you know, Lois Wakeland. I said nope. He ain't doing it. Wouldn't no. be prudent. Ow. I said don't, don't need that embarrassment, coach. Yeah. Well, I tried a lot of different sports. Through well, the I years. went to. They had pep assembly. I mean, they would they would they, can't, they would close out like you know school went to three o'clock from uh, one to, one to three. Everybody would they would shut down school and everybody would go and they would be a big. I mean, the whole school would be there to watch the wrestling match from one to three. I mean, it was just a wild event. It's still mine. I mean, it was big time. <laughs> Someone just texted in, Bob. As one of the referees for tonight's match, I promise not to wear a mask. That's right. LOL. <laughs> Wrestling, first wrestling match ever, folks, for Wayne County High School at the Benny Ratliff Arena, starting at what time, Bob? I'm not sure what time. Oh, you don't know what time it starts? I think it's around 4, but I haven't What time is that first match? Because they start with 100-pounders, and they go up to 300-pounders. I interviewed Coach Points. It's going to be long because there's two different schools coming, so there's three schools involved. So it's going to be a lengthy event. 515. 515, first match. 515's first match. At the Benny Ratliff Arena. Yep, there at Wayne County High School. Looking forward to watching some wrestling this afternoon at the high school. Debut. 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 You can say that you were there history-making. First wrestling match ever at Wayne County High School. I wonder what kind of uniforms they got or what kind of... I have no idea. Probably those tight spandex. I'm just talking about the color. they got to have the school colors. Colors, yeah. Gold, white, black, yellow. You know, see what, you know. Yeah. And where do they get them? Yeah, where do you... I'm sure the coach lined them up. Lined them up somewhere, yeah. Yeah. So if this person is a referee, maybe they're a halfway coach, maybe, or something like that. When I say halfway coach, involved in the program, I don't mean halfway coach. They're a referee. Maybe they know what colors we have. It's as nice as that weight room facility. It's got to be nice, man. That weight room facility is nice. Now, where is that at? At the high school. I know, but we're at it. It's in the gym. In a, at the, under, where the know, weight room used to be? Right. So they just refurbished it. It's beautiful. But it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Huh? Brand new equipment. Everything's got Wayne County listed on it. And You've been in there working out, Eddie? No. No? You didn't go there with any of the players and just say, hey, let me show you how to do 250. I don't lift weights. <laughs> I do the treadmill. I, I just I walk. I'm, I'm not into, you know, I can't get into that grunt and all that stuff. You I can't get into that? No. Uh, no. I said. Okay. Get the treadmill, that kind of That's stuff. That's right. <clears throat> Card cardio. Cardio. I'm a cardio person. You're a cardio person. All right. I'm, not into, I'm not into bodybuilding and weightlifting and all that stuff. Well, they say that uh, people our age, Bob, need to do a combination of both. Some uh, some um, weightlifting type of um, activities and some cardio activities kind of split in between the two about four to five times a week. At least 30 minutes during each time. I like to eat too much. <laughs> So your jaw bones and muscles work real good, huh? 
Yeah. Yeah. I like to eat. Yeah. That's my downfall, but that's I enjoy food. <laughs> Okay. I saw a good movie last night. It's what was that? It's the Instant Family. I didn't really realize it's based on a true story. It's Mark Wahlberg's new movie. Uh, it's yeah, I've heard about that. But it's a it's a pretty good movie. I saw it last night at Strand Cinema, but I highly recommend it. And it's just I didn't realize it was based on a true story, but it's a excellent film. So Instant Family. Instant Family. Okay. Uh, Comedy. Comedy, yeah. but it's serious too. Serious. I mean, but I mean, it's, I mean, it's about. These kids foster, you know, adoptions, things like but, that. Okay. So, so instant family right. with Mark Wahlberg and but man, there's the other actor. I'm remember. not sure who the female is, okay. but I've seen her before. I just don't know her name, but she does a good job. But it was, it was a good film. Enjoyed it. Okay. And if you haven't seen The Grinch, you got to go see The Grinch. Now, this is, yeah, I mean, it's a whole different Grinch. I mean, just a whole different take on it? Or? Well, yeah, it's pretty much the same story. It's just a different, it's just funny, though. It's, yeah, it's, it's just a different I, take I, on it. I, I enjoyed it. Like when Jim Carrey did it a few several years ago, you know that was that was, right. that was fun. This is a cartoon, though. This is a cartoon. Huh? Uh, this is good stuff. Okay, I love the Grinch. Charlie Brown Christmas on the night. That's my favorite though. Oh, it is. CB. Oh yeah, that's my favorite Christmas cartoon. Love it, but it's on tonight. So. Oh, it is. Got my Charlie Brown Christmas. You got Charlie it. Brown. Yeah. Got my DVD. Watch set. that tonight. Yeah. That's, oh, got to. That's an all-time classic. <laughs> <laughs> I love Charlie Brown Christmas. That makes my credit. That, that and Rudolph, those are two I gotta see. So if I see those two in the Grinch, I'm in good shape. <laughs> yeah, you're just fine then, huh? I'm good. Now what about uh, a Christmas story? Oh, that's on Christmas Day. Yeah, yeah. all day long. All day long. T B S or something yeah. like that, TNT, whatever it is, all day, one right yeah. after another, after another, after right. another. Yeah. You know, these days, just about every institution is being torn apart by the uh, PC folks out there. And then read an article the other day about this person says, oh, it's just nothing about consumerism and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, and, uh, you know, it, it just ripping a Christmas story all apart. And they're, then, they're trying to take, take away from Rudolph. They're trying to say Rudolph's not a good oh, story. Oh, yeah, yeah. And 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 I, and I, and I uh, heard the other day that some radio station up in the northeast area is not playing um, uh, "Baby It's Cold, Cold outside, outside" because right. it's uh, because of the Me Too movement right. or something like that. I mean, we're going to PC ourselves to out of nut, out of everything. Clay Travis on the morning time says he's playing it every morning just because. Of that. <laughs> So if you want to hear Baby is Cold Outside, just tune in early in the morning on AM 1370 because Clay Travis is going to play it every mm -hmm. every day mm -hmm. now until Christmas because he's, just, he, he's like you. He doesn't understand these people trying to destroy Christmas. <laughs> Take away these great shows. <laughs> just anything like that, you know. It's just, you know, PC ourselves to death. There won't be nothing. You can't say nothing. Can't do nothing. Might offend somebody. Might say something wrong. Yeah. We're supposed to live in a country where we have free speech. You may not agree with somebody. You know, might, might agree what they say or their beliefs or anything like that. But we all have the right to, and everybody should agree that we should all have the right to believe and say what we want to. But there's so many people out there that think, that, well, if you don't believe what I believe and say what I say, then, you know, you have no right to, to uh, express your opinions. And that's just not right. Free speech. Our, our, our founding fathers lived in a situation before where they didn't have that, and that's the reason why that's way up there in the top part of the Constitution. How can you, how can you criticize Rudolph? Come on. Yeah. It's Rudolph. It's Rudolph. It's a great story. Yeah. <laughs> great, the, little, the little guy great song, wins, man. you know? The, the underdog wins, yeah? Becomes the hero. How can you <laughs> I know I have already. I, 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 I just shake my head. Like, what is the, what's wrong with this? Where is it going to end? Get a life. All right, Bob, we are out of town. Hook it up. Have, have a good day. day. All right, the world famous Butch and Bob Show brought to you by Murphy Builder Supply, Northeast Broad Street in downtown Jessa, by Wolf Animal Hospital on West Cherry Street. Also by the Women's Health Center on Cherry Street to Broad Street in downtown Jessup and by Mike Birch Ford in Blackshear. The world famous Butch and Bob Show.